Hi everyone, I'm Michaela. I'm a current master's student in digital marketing. And over the year I've learned quite a bit about email marketing, but of course when you come to actually doing it, it feels a bit daunting. So I've put together this webinar to introduce the basics of A-B testing in email marketing. And I'll walk through step by step exactly how you run an A-B test uh, using MailChimp. But first things first, uh, why email? Well, contrary to popular belief, email is far from dead. There's plenty of evidence that email is one of the most successful and cost-effective channels a digital marketer can use. However, in many companies, email is seen as old-fashioned and just not trendy in digital marketing today. But the one thing bosses can't argue with is being presented with ROI. So this is from research carried out by the Direct Marketing Association in the UK in 2013. They found that email ROI has hit an unbelievable 2,500%. So it's not surprising that respondents indicated that they plan to invest further in email marketing. Um, the ROI from email marketing is also increasing. In 2012, it was found to return £21 for every £1 spent. And that was up to £25 for every £1 spent in 2013. It's important to note though that email is not magic. It needs care and attention in order to get this kind of success out of it. As the DMA say here, 77% of ROI comes from segmented, targeted and triggered campaigns. So, you know, customers who've signed up to your newsletter, they don't really care what, about what you have to say so much unless it's of some sort of value to them. So segmenting your email lists is key to ensuring that your customers are receiving only email content which is of relevance to them. One final interesting point from the DMA research, they found the best performing emails in 2013 to be first the, the regular old newsletter followed by uh, welcome messages and customer surveys. I think that's really interesting and um, particularly the customer surveys. If you have customers who are willing to answer a survey for you, not only do you gain really valuable feedback, but you also gain great material to possibly form the basis of a really insightful blog post or a white paper, um, and that can feed into your content marketing. So, getting started with A-B testing. Um, if you're not quite sure what an A-B test is, I describe it simply as creating two random groups. Uh, group A is a control group and Group B is a treatment group. Your treatment group is going to receive some sort of special treatment like uh, maybe you want to try out phrasing your subject line as a question and seeing if that has any impact on the open rate. Um, if you keep everything else in the email the same, uh, you know, the time you send it and the content of the email and so on, you'll be quite confident that if there is any outrageous variation between the two groups that it's very likely down to the thing you were testing in this case the subject line. So <clears throat> once you um, have a handle on A-B testing in my opinion the next thing you should do is Google Dan Zarella. Um, he's what they call a, a social media scientist. He takes different things like Twitter and Facebook and email marketing and methodically tests the hell out of them. He he asks simple questions like saying, um, like, you know, does saying please retweet increase uh, the likelihood of being retweeted? Um, well, by the way, it does. Um, so, for instance, this is from Zarella's uh, Science of Email Marketing, where he tests the open rates and click rates by day. Um, he, he had access to a large collection of email data from HubSpot and found that open rates and click rates on weekends show an increase, an increase compared to midweek. So this doesn't mean that this is the law or you know, this is the rule for everybody and it's the same in every case, um, but it might be something which you'd want to carry out an A-B test on. He also tested to see if the time of day made any difference to email open rates and click rates. Um, he got this indication that sending emails early in the morning seemed to have the most favourable open rates and click rates. So now I'll quickly outline the rules of A-B testing um, 
before walking through step by step how to carry out your own A-B test using MailChimp. So firstly, you need a hypothesis. Um, so here you really should be writing down a short sentence that summarizes what you're trying to prove. Secondly, um, and as I mentioned a few slides back, an A-B test can only be successful if you're testing one variable while everything else stays constant. Third, you need to choose which metric is going to show which group wins. Um, I'm going to mention all of these things again um, when we're doing the walkthrough, so don't worry if you're not really sure what, what this is right now. Fourth, make sure the sample that you're using for the test is, is large enough to be statistically significant. Fifth, make sure the groups um, are selected randomly. When you're using MailChimp, um, it, it looks after this random splitting for you, so it's okay. Um, like Zoella, always be testing, but try to keep your head screwed on and, and think carefully about what's worth testing. Finally, um, once you've put in the work uh, to carrying out these tests, um, make sure to document uh, so that your findings aren't wasted. Again, uh, Search Engine Watch makes a good suggestion saying, you know, why not make a blog post out of your findings? So this way uh, you document your work and you feed your content marketing channel too. <coughs> okay, so now I'm going to walk through step by step how to run an A-B test on MailChimp. They actually make it really simple, so you shouldn't really have any trouble with it, but if you haven't tried it before, this should help you if you get stuck anywhere. So, when you log into your MailChimp, you'll arrive at your dashboard as usual. So you just go up to uh, Create Campaign here in the top right. That'll bring you to a screen like this, where you have a choice to select a, a regular campaign, or down here you'll see the, uh, the AB Split Campaign. So you click Select. Um, if your MailChimp account is very new, you may not see the screen. They don't seem to allow A-B tests until there's some data in the account from previous campaigns. Probably just so they know that you've made yourself familiar with the basic features of MailChimp before jumping into the more complicated stuff. Um, so on this page, you select what you'd like to test. So in our case, we're going to test um, two different subject lines. Um, what this is down here is that the test is going to 20% uh, of your total list initially before picking the winner and sending it on to the remaining 80% of your list. So, for example, if your list had, you know, 2,500 emails in it, um, 250 would be sent email A and 250 would be sent email B. Um, like I mentioned previously, MailChimp picks these segments randomly for you. Um, so finally on this page, you choose uh, how long we want MailChimp to wait before choosing the winner. Um, and here we have selected, um, we want the open rate to be our metric, so whatever, um, if A or B, whichever has the, the better open rate, and we'll say we want to pick the winner after one day. So you just go down here and click next. Next, you're prompted to choose your recipients. So all of your lists will be listed here and you pick the one you want to send the campaign to. And then you click next. Then you'll see your campaign info. Uh, we said we're going to send, we're going to test two different subject lines and see if that has any impact on open rates. So here, We've, I've taken an inspiration from one of Zarella's findings. Uh, oh, sorry, one of Zarella's findings, where he found that, contrary to what was often thought, posing a question in an email subject line actually correlated with lower open rates. Um, but this may not be the case for everyone, so we'll test it out and see how our list responds to a question in the subject line. So, have you tried testing your emails with A/B testing? And then you click next. Uh, oh, also here um, you, you've named your campaign. This is for your own your own reference. Um, the from name is what your your recipients are going to see. So uh, keep that consistent. And this is the uh, the email address they're going to see. It's from as well. 
So, um, these next steps is actually where you're going to spend most of your time because it's designing your email content, but it's not where we're going to spend most of our time today. Um, so you pick your template and you're designing your email. And once that's completed, uh, you'll be ready to send your email. But wait, if I've learned anything the hard way, it's this. Do not send your email campaign until you have sent a test email to yourself and to other colleagues. Send, send loads of them. Uh, keep changing, keep improving and keep sending it to yourself and checking that everything's perfect. Um, check these on different browsers um, and devices, including mobile devices. Check that all links um, within the email are working and that they're relevant. Um, and finally, of course, check all of the spelling and grammar over and over. Um, and when you have carefully checked all of that, do it again. Uh, it's really important that you're 110% confident that your email is perfect. Because once you hit send, um, there's nothing MailChimp can do to cancel your campaign. So once you've hit that send, that's it. So when the, uh, when the test is complete, MailChimp presents the results like this. Um, you can see all of the different metrics and how each performed. Um, because we were testing subject lines, the best metric to determine the winner is open rate. Um, so here's the open rate. Um, it's the best indicator of how a subject line has performed uh, as it's the most prominent feature a user sees before deciding whether or not to even open the mail. Um, so these results are for a test that I ran. Group B was the winner with um, almost 40% 40, 40 opening rate. Um, versus 31% for um, for Group A. <clears throat> Other ways to gauge the performance of your campaign is to compare your metrics to the industry averages. Um, MailChimp has a really good resource um, of industry averages for email marketing campaigns where you can see how your campaigns are measuring up and here's the link for that down here. Um, you should also check how each campaign measures up to your own average metrics as well um, for that list. You'll be able to see whether this campaign did better than usual or perhaps it got, uh, you know, you might get some hints as to why it's performed better or worse. And you can use all of these insights then to inform your decisions for future campaigns. Finally, you should make sure not to neglect mobile users. Um, if you check your stats for how many of your customers are reading their emails on a mobile device, you might be surprised You know, if, if it's something you hadn't really thought about too much before. Um, if it's a large proportion, like here you can see it's almost 50-50 between desktop and mobile. Um, you should make sure that all your campaigns are optimised for mobile and uh, read well on the smaller screen. So, um, that's pretty much it. Um, just to recap quickly on the key takeaways of this webinar. Firstly, email is not dead. For digital marketers who are giving it the time and attention and investment it deserves, it's returning a hugely impressive uh, return on investment. Um, careful segmentation of your customers is the key to seeing the kind of results we saw earlier. Um, when exploring A-B testing, explore Dan Zarella's work. In my opinion, it's, it's a great place to start as he presents this kind of thing in such a nice, simple way for beginners. Um, but also helps experienced email marketers to, you know, see the wood for the trees. Um, thirdly, before setting up your A-B test, take note of the rules I went through um, and allow these to guide you in forming a hypothesis and deciding how to choose your winner and your metrics and so on. Um, fourthly, only send your email when you've checked and rechecked your campaign. Um, if ever you're going to be anal, be anal before you send out an email campaign. 
Um, fifth, then, measure results against industry averages and your own averages to get more insight into how your campaign has performed. So, thanks a million for watching. Um, if you have any questions or want to connect, you can get me on my Twitter, at Michaela Tweets. Um, my LinkedIn is Michaela Simpson one or you can follow my digital marketing blog at uh, michaela85.wordpress.com. Thanks, everybody.